right hand action. It is currently incredibly inappropriate for me to make any jokes vis-a-vis former WWE chairman Vince McMahon because, well, look it up if you somehow missed that news. So I won't be addressing him, but let's just say WWE as an entity certainly had their favourite playthings. Yes, that works, tactfully done as ever. In this case, they clearly seem to favour Sony's first handheld console over that of Nintendo's then current console, Nintendo DS. After all, they came out in the same year and were replaced in the same year by the Vita and 3DS respectively, yet the DS only held host to three games. The PSP? Seven. Seven games. There's favouritism, and then there is this. Sony is pointing at the WrestleMania sign, while Nintendo are getting jobbed out on Sunday Night Heat to Bob Buchanan, or appearing in the background of a Foo Fight segment involving Kelly Kelly and Michelle McCall. I mean, sure, the DS's rather unique for the time touchscreen interface must have given publishers THQ a bit more pause for thought as to what to do with that machine, which they did to varying degrees of success, as can be seen in the DS WWE review video. The PSP, being as it is a slightly underpowered version of the PS2, had a far more straightforward path. Your interface is a controller with a screen, no thinking required, and so you get versions of the home console editions with a little bit more of a pair down, a bit like when the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan came back after the early 90s steroid trial. So we're going to be looking at them today, and rather than compare them with the console heavyweights, I'm going to treat them like a cruiserweight division and pit them against each other. Starting at WWE SmackDown vs Raw 2006, and we're going to look at all the features, the roster and gameplay each year, and see what's good and what's bad since the previous effort. Being an annual release, there's likely to be little that alters, but let's treat the PSP like Cody Rhodes and let it finish its story with a big over-the-top flourish that is, in this case, WWE All-Stars. Rest assured, I'll let you know the differences I do find as I make my way through the mid-card. I'm sorry about the epilepsy-inducing crowd, by the way. They look like they've been caught in one of those panes of glass that Zod and his cronies were trapped in at the start of Superman 2. The perils of emulation, eh? WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2006 then, the game where you too can play as Joy Giovanni. What have we got on offer here then, apart from loading times that will make a Spectrum 48K flush red with embarrassment? And as we're speaking of embarrassing, what we've got here in this game is the most cancelable WWE game in history. So you've got the married guy currently under investigation by AEW for creeping on a younger female wrestler, a guy who swung his genitals at an air steward, a guy whose gimmick it was to be an Islamic terrorist that disappeared after the 7-7 London bombings, the biggest star in 80s wrestling who's also now a bit of a racist, and the fella who killed his wife and kid then killed himself. Oh, and let's not forget the chap who performed as a special needs person with severe autism. At least Vince isn't a selectable character, but he is here in GM mode, no doubt about to defecate on an intern. Or perhaps he's asked everyone to leave gorilla position as he's asked the Divas to go out and hit each other with pillows and rip each other's school uniforms off. Which is here in the game's least playable mode, the Fulfill Your Fantasy mode. The signs of Chairmonic indecency were there all along. Chairmonic isn't a word, but it might be now. If you're used to the home console versions, then you'll be pleased to know that WWE 2008 controls exactly the same, apart from perhaps a little bit of reconfiguring due to the lesser amount of shoulder bumps. Each high energy move you perform will drain your stamina, and rather than being the supreme athletes you'd think these fellas would be, they get plum tuckered toot sweet. They'll be t exhausted to do most of their moves when this bar is empty. This, I believe, is THQ's plan to slow down the matches a little from their arcadey PS1 and PS2 heyday. You can replenish this meter by standing off to one side and holding down the select button, which can then leave you open to attack. Within the context of the sport, or other sports entertainment, it makes sense, but it can be annoying breaking up your winning flow to wheeze against a turnbuckle for two minutes. L and R counter grapples and strikes respectively. And all in all, this is a finely tuned engine of a wrestling system that's been adjusted since its 2000 debut. 
the fact that we're still tinkering with the same engine 18 years later is a bit shameful, but it does what it's supposed to. The PSP has all of the match types, customization options and story modes of its big console brethren. The storyline is fully voiced by the participants, although there's no commentary in the matches. The storylines are pretty linear, but that's fine. They're entertaining enough and there's little in the way of phoning it in from the wrestlers. The aforementioned GM mode, which vanished throughout the 2010s, is brilliant fun. You can take control of either SmackDown or Raw and attempt to outperform the other show whilst managing injuries, exhaustion and finances. The more spectacular matches and the more popular performers cost more money, but they get the most attention. This mode is compelling entertainment and I'm stunned it was removed for over a decade. It's arguably more fun than playing the matches themselves. Exclusive to the PSP version of SmackDown vs Raw 2006 are three mini-games. A rudimentary 10 question quiz using assets from the game. A fun poker mini-game where you can pick any character or NPC from the game. What's in your hand Michael Cole you turd. And finally and crucially a game where you have to manoeuvre the autistic grappler to the ring while avoiding obstacles because he's a big dummy. What was it I was saying about the game being the most cancelable in the series history? It's definitely this one. IGN reviewed the 2006 edition of Smackdown in December 2005. They said, other than the load times, all of the same goodies as the PS2 version were ported over with few technical sacrifices. There's no other handheld wrestling game with this much replay, value or depth. And they gave it an 8.7 out of 10. Moving on to WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2007 and that familiar game engine has gone in for a tune-up. There's a more contextual nature to the manoeuvres based on what position you have your opponent in and what furnishing that you're near. You can twang their ball sacks on the top rope and for the first time you've got direct control on the level of love spud damage you wish to deal out. Immersive. Select is still used for stamina regeneration and it's still crap. The roster seems a little bit dull this year, especially when compared to the cancelable colossi of the previous game, though the rabid wolverine is still there, being all future murderer The great Eddie Guerrero has passed between games and has been moved to the legend section of this title, rightfully so. Overall though, you've got a lot of forgettable padding below the headliners like Cena, Triple H and Batista. Sorry to any fans of Vito, Kid Cash and Lance Cade. It's not the game's fault. That is who was there. In terms of match types, McMahon has had to zip himself up as the Fulfill Your Fantasy match is no more, now replaced by the far more exciting Money in the Bank. Though it should be said, what seems like it should be a frenetically exciting multi-man ladder match soon ends up being a drudge as matches usually end up with a lot of manoeuvring the ladder about to get it just right underneath the alluring briefcase. All six competitors end up like an OCD painter and decorator. The ladder is something that SmackDown vs Raw has never quite managed to figure out. The more the less merry to, as you'll be at this for a long time with all the interruptions of five other participants. Season mode doesn't do anything particularly different, while the GM mode is still in place and has in fact been expanded as it includes smaller shows like Velocity and Heat, which you can use to boost rivalries of less popular stars. Shine, psychosis, shine. There's more detail to tinker with, too, for fans of this mode, making it the perfect way to while away the hours of a long journey. Plus, Mr. Bookman sends you text messages, which aren't written with the same grammar as he used in those recent sex scandal court case ones. You dirty pervert. IGN reviewed the 2007 edition in December 2006. They said, think of Smackdown 2007 as the Ric Flair of video games. A wrestling great with enough titles and fond memories to keep its forward momentum for another year. But it's aged to a point where we're questioning how much longer it can go. And with that review, they gave it a score of 7.8 out of 10. As sure as tricep injuries are to befall CM Punk, so we come to WWE SmackDown vs Raw 2008. And Punk is here too. Another person who's here in abundance is, yes, Mr McMahon. He's an unlockable character. He's an antagonist in each of the modes. 
He interviews you if you choose to be a general manager. He's everywhere. He was very heavily involved on the television product at the time, to be fair. This being the era he was an ECW champion and had that big storyline with Donald Trump, who isn't in the game. Speaking of scandalous things, we also have the newly relaunched ECW. Well, a heavily sanitised version, which gives us a new match type, the ECW Extreme Rules match. Although there's not actually a lot to it, as it's just a hardcore match with extra paraphernalia to pull out from beneath the ring and you can set fire to a table. Definitely don't do that at home, kids. The lady of the house will be furious and you'll burn the doilies. The ECW guys also get their own crash to hit each other in, in the corner of the arena there, which is nice for them. Other new features include a beat the clock tournament, where you have to beat your opponent quicker than your competitors in the other bracket, a hall of fame achievement system that tasks you with completing a number of difficult tasks based on historical events, and the 24-7 mode. The 24-7 mode encompasses the single player story, the creator character mode, and the GM mode all into one. It's called 24-7 because you can choose to do various tasks on your day off that will boost your statistics or your popularity. There are even branching storylines. These upgrades to the game modes make each of the modes a bit more immersive, but this is the point that the GM mode was retired like Ric Flair by Shawn Michaels. That is that it unretired again much later. Yeah. The biggest overhaul to WWE SmackDown vs Raw is its gameplay though. Each character is designated with a particular fighting style which results in bonus moves and abilities. Jeff Hardy is counted as a high flyer and so can spring off the ropes, whereas Tommy Dreamer is a hardcore wrestler and so can deal more damage with a chair, say. The control has changed too. The unpopular stamina drain recovery is gone. There's more context-based moves and the controls have been a little reconfigured to mix results. The run button being moved to the shoulder button works, but what doesn't work is a lot of context and submission type moves move away from the D-pad to the nub. It's very awkward in practice. Despite this minor quibble though, this is one of the better WWE games on the PSP I reckon, albeit with the proliferation of the creepy sex offender chairman grandpa, who is all over its presentation. But at least Benoit's gone now. IGN reviewed the 2008 edition in November 2007. They said if you really dug the 2007 edition, you might consider buying this, the 2008 edition. I found the controls off-putting and lack of detail sad, but the big game modes, tournament, money in the bank, TLC, GM, etc. They make up the console versions and they're here for you to digest on the go. Still the poor graphics, D-pad to nub switching and flawed 24-7 mode mean I cannot recommend that you take a chair to the head for this title. 6.5 out of 10. WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2009 now emerges like the gobbledygooker from an egg smothered in amniotic fluid and yolk. Changes this year are the inclusion of an Inferno match, which encourages the player to throw their opponent into an angry curtain of flame that surrounds the ring. This has gone from combat sports to attempted murder. The more dramatic the action, the more the flames build, and when it hits a certain heat, you can launch the goon through the ropes and straight to an appointment with the Burns unit. Tag team matches get a bit more substance this year too, with extra emphasis on team psychology and moves that haven't really been part of the series before now. As well as being able to pull off more complex tag manoeuvres, wrestlers can blind tag, uh, where the ringside mate tags the nearby partner rather than the other way around. There are hot tags, where a fighter who's taken a shooing will swap to their fresh chum who will be all hyped up and excitably violent and partners will grab opponents if they venture too close. It certainly adds to the previously undeveloped tag team matches that date back to the very first game in the series. The fighting styles, only introduced the previous year, are already gone, and the signature moves have been upgraded to be like a mini finishing move before you get the full finisher. The story mode is now Road to WrestleMania, which is a series of branching stories where you control a particular wrestler for each of those tales. As they centre around particular wrestlers, they feel more authentic to the personalities involved. CM Punk, for instance, will talk about his straight-edge lifestyle and interact with established rivals like Jeff Hardy. 
but the trade-off is that it becomes a lot more linear. As well as Punk, you've got stories for Jericho, Undertaker, Triple H, Cena and a special tag team storyline for Batista and Rey Mysterio. You can still do a season mode with whichever wrestler you like, but it's not as story driven as the Road to WrestleMania mode. In season mode you can tweak affiliation, whether the rosters are heel or face, and even what special abilities that they have. This might help stop it getting repetitive too quickly. IGN reviewed the 2009 edition in November 2008. In the end, WWE SmackDown vs Raw 2009 is fun, but it falls short of its ambition. It's a stripped down version of what's on the home consoles, and it shows. It's not bad, but it's nowhere near as solid or as entertaining as its brethren. They gave it a 6.5. This video already feels as endless as a Roman Reigns title run, but here we go again with WWE SmackDown vs Raw 2010. And the new match this year is the Championship Scramble. A small clutch of wrestlers enter the ring at different intervals with the aim of being the competitor with the last pin at the end of the timer when it expires, as then they will be named the champ. It's a fun little addition to the swelling ranks of bout options. THQ also took time this year to sharpen up a couple of raggedy looking modes that they've left alone for a few years, and it's two of the more popular modes that have been picked by players historically, those being Royal Rumble and Backstage Brawls. There are more options for mayhem here with quick time sequences and interactive backstage ephemera. Though, I wouldn't say that despite the bells and whistles, either mode is massively improved. But the quick time sequences end up feeling detached and artificial, not fitting the flow of the game. More cinematic, but a step in the wrong direction. The career mode in 24-7 is much the same, though you can now tweak allies and rivals for the competitors in the WWE Universe using the My WWE option. Road to WrestleMania keeps up the same high quality presentation of the previous year's effort. But this time we've got a brand new warfare story headed by Messrs Cena and Triple H, along with stories for Edge, Randy Orton, Shawn Michaels, a women's story for Mickie James and one designed especially for your creator wrestler. The biggest addition is the Maker Storyline Mode Creator, which as the title suggests is a make your own Road to WrestleMania affair. It will take you hours to do a month's worth of storyline, but that's down to the wealth of options available. It is very comprehensive, commendably so, but it's only for the truly dedicated, and unlike the console versions, these aren't shareable. Still, very impressive and something someone creative can have a lot of fun with. So this 2010 edition got reviewed in October 2009 by IGN. They said the PSP version is everything that made the PS3 version great, with a few notable exceptions. Some of the gripes are forgivable due to the technical limitations, but the graphics should look better and the gameplay should feel better. Overall, the jaggy graphics and robotic movements pull you out of the experience. They gave it a 7.2 out of 10. Our road to Finish Mania takes one quick stop off as the last of the WWE SmackDown vs Raw games on the PSP was 2011 and in terms of new matches we've got nothing except that now your path to being the wrestling god is surely complete as we have a create a match option. Before you get as excited as Jerry Lawler looking at a 23 year old blonde's breasts though temper that enthusiasm. It usually boils down to having the same rules but in different environments so you can have an Iron Man match in the Elimination Chamber or a First Blood match in the Inferno Ring. Perhaps this is something they built on in later console iterations but what we get here is rather subpar for a first version. In the absence of non-player created new match types another two modes get tarted up suitably Backstage Brawl gets a further layer of polish on last year with new locations for bloodletting and the Hell in a Cell gets a larger environment to throw your opponent into. It also gets more context related moves and is overall more flashy and cinematic. This works a lot better for the Hell in a Cell match than it did for the Royal Rumble mode in the last edition of the game and gives a real sense of danger to proceedings. Universe mode now takes in 
all of your one-off matches as part of the season mode, tracking the stats and rivalries as you play. Road to WrestleMania has you wandering about in third person this time, which is kind of interesting, but doesn't really add that much. And, well, McMahon slipping back into your DMs, the grubby swine. Create a story and create a finisher also get a bit of a expansion on the previous year, but it's probably the most lazy annual release of all the games on this list so far. When we got to the 2011 version, IGN didn't actually review any more of the PSP games on their own. So instead, I'll give you a rundown of what they said about the PS2 version, which is pretty identical. And they reviewed this in October 2010. Making choices in the stories, never knowing what was going to happen in the universe mode and seeing the TV presentation is great. Sure, it's a souped up version of last year's game, but there's nothing wrong with that when the game is this much fun. They gave it an 8 out of 10. What isn't a lazy annual release, though, is the final game in our list. A spin-off. Finally, the originality has come back to the WWE PSP games with All-Stars, a cross-platform attraction of a game spanning the generations as the WWE legends of the past come to blows with the 2011 roster in a game completely and utterly separate in gameplay from the regular series. The presentation is massively different here, and it's a divisive look that lends itself to the new gameplay. The wrestlers look like they're roided to bursting muscular point. Even the straight edge CM Punk looks like he's been seeing Bridget Nielsen in Rocky IV for a good old pricking. The gameplay is chaotically good fun, playing as it does with a 3D update of the classic Midway WrestleMania arcade game, but crossed with Tekken. There are combos with chain strikes and throws, outlandishly ridiculous special moves and lightning fast play that will certainly take some adjusting to if you've only played the earlier efforts in this series. The game was programmed by THQ San Diego, who had previously worked on the TNA games. One of the very best parts of the title is the fine editing job they've done with the intro videos to the game's fantasy warfare mode which aped the presentation seen before a big WrestleMania match. These are top notch, and even in standard WWE television programs, they are one of the best parts of the product. Who would come out on top of a match between those two snakes, Randy Orton and Jake the Snake Roberts? Who would come out on top between the boozy Stone Cold Steve Austin or the teetotal CM Punk? How about the two giants Big Show and Andre? Or the big superstars Hogan or Cena. Brilliantly done, although sometimes a little bit redundant. After all, Triple H and The Rock have had many battles, as have Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero, and of course, The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels have had tons of encounters. Perhaps this self-same idea would work better today, considering there's not as many crossovers given the time that's lapsed. But that's not to say that All Stars is all good though. As addictive as it is, there are way less options in terms of matches, creator character moves or careers. Maybe these would have been added in on later versions. Sadly, given how poorly it sold, it's unlikely that we will ever get another iteration of this. Although some people would count Battlegrounds, but that's terrible. So yeah, it's not gonna happen. Still, if you can track this game down, give it a go and as a bonus, I can tell you that it's not lost very much from the bigger brother console versions that came out alongside it. IGN reviewed all of the versions of WWE All-Stars together in May of 2011. They said that the PSP version is impressive, everything except online play is here from the other versions. All the content is available and that's saying something as most WWE PSP outings are missing key features. They gave all of the versions a 7 out of 10. And that is it. That is the lengthy list of WWE games that came out on Sony's high-powered handheld. Sure to be found for £1.50 in CEX's Countrywide. Which one should you get out of the seven? Well, that's difficult, actually. All of them have their merits, to be fair. I think in terms of the handhelds, be they Nintendo or whoever, this is the best array of games that you can get. But I'm going to go with, despite the asthmatic stamina meter, the loading times and the problematic rosters, I think I'm going to have to go for 2007 or 6.
I think when it moved over to the twin nub and directional button control, it never felt as organic. And plus, you lose that GM mode with the later ones. I'm sure the console versions didn't have that control issue, so 2008 is probably the best one for them. Unless they like making stories in 2010 or 2011. But for me, 2006 or 2007, they are the games that I will return to. And which one was the absolute pits that needs to be thanos from history? like Messrs Benoit, Lesnar and McMahon. I would say none of them are particularly bad. 2011 added the least, but 2009 took the most away. So WWE 2009, if you have to avoid one, would be it. Now, with all that out of the way, I'm off to join the Bloodline and hang out with my boy Dwayne. I'll have you know I'm very Samoan. I have pineapple on my pizza ones. That's the right island, isn't it? Right? Right? Like, subscribe and K thanks bye. Also lose my number Vince.